Another thing that came to my mind is that we give our plants water, not cola. We give our pets the correct pet food for optimal health. We put the correct fuel in our cars. So why do we not prioritize what we put into our bodies? Throughout my life, I've always challenged myself with different tasks, whether it be to cut out sugar or more extreme, a 40 day water fast. I just like the, the feeling of knowing that I've accomplished something that I set my mind to. Some backstory, when I was younger, I ate a lot of meat. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot, primarily chicken. And it was just normal. At that time, there wasn't a lot of information about the relationship between health, sickness, and your food. Those that know me know that I ate a lot of meat and it's probably 10 times more than you're thinking right now. Um, but they would be very surprised at my lifestyle choices that I live today. And also, I'd probably be the last person that they would think would live a plant-based lifestyle. It's quite normal in the West Indian culture to eat a lot of meat and most of the meals are made up of primarily meat or at least they were when I was growing up. And so one generation to the next, you tend to hold on to the same recipes and do the same thing the way that your family did it the years before and you adopt some of these same patterns or behavior. Not only was I adopting my family's cultural habits, I was also creating new ones and really embracing the whole fast food, chicken shops, uh, McDonald's and all of the foods that became readily available, cheaper, easier, and they taste great. But in 2008, my life took a turn when I started to have seizures. And these seizures were very uncontrollable, unpredictable, I didn't know when they were going to happen, didn't have any warnings. And they really changed my life, really took away my independence, took away my freedom to live like a normal person and had me living in fear not knowing you know, when the next seizure would come and also if I'd ever get up from the next seizure. That same year, I lost my father to a heart attack and I would say this was a defining moment for me that I need to do something about my health and this is where I would say the challenges began and really focus on things that would have me live a more healthy lifestyle. Back to my seizures, I had tried a lot of medications, I had gone through so many tests, had so many mixed diagnoses, and I kind of got fed up and I was like, well, what can I do for myself? You know, it may not fix the issue, but what can I do to perhaps improve my body functions and improve my brain stimulation? And so it was a no brainer that actually I have control over my diet. And so let me do something with that. In 2015, I had decided to just give up meat and I became a vegetarian for a year. And that was a strange year because I didn't have any information. I didn't know what I was doing. And so my diet probably wasn't very good. All I know is that I didn't eat meat and there were no real significant changes to my body, to my mind, to my experience of being a vegetarian during that time. It was just, I was doing it and it was cool. In 2016, however, I had realized that I'd pushed the boundaries of what I knew was capable and I wanted to go a step further and so I cut out all animal products. No fish, no meat, no eggs, no dairy. Um, and I became plant-based. My motivations, first of all, for doing this is my health, my family and my legacy. Starting with my health, I had to really look at myself and say, if my health is not a priority to me, how can anything else be a priority? Secondly, for me, it's family. Um, knowing that my children can have a father that's well and able-bodied and present and not limited by sicknesses and just feeling lethargic all the time. And really, that's just not fair based on my own choices in life for them to miss out on me being present there all the time and well. And lastly, my third motivation of legacy is really me being self-aware enough to know that a lot of my early eating choices were based on my cultural upbringing, but also the society that I live and what's deemed normal and what's deemed abnormal, what's deemed expensive and affordable. By me living this lifestyle, which has been very successful for me so far, it now gives an, another pathway for 
the generations behind me within my family line or people connected to me to see as a viable option that's not based on what society says or the cultural norms. It's quite funny when I look back now after five years at the things that some people had said to me in the beginning that you're going to waste away or you know where will you get your protein from and what will you eat and I understand it a lack of knowledge and understanding about something like this can cause a lot of questions and statements that are misinformed but I didn't just jump straight into it I had done my research and I knew that there was a lot of information that others didn't have that I did have and I think that's been the staple of my journey so far and why I've been able to maintain it and that's what I'd like to share with you today. We've all heard the famous saying we are what we eat and you know it's so true but when you think about it it's more than just a statement it's actually um, really powerful but I don't think it's something that we take seriously enough and sometimes we don't really respect our bodies as long as it doesn't look like it's affecting us on the outside we don't care about what's happening on the inside and a lot of people get away with looking like they are in great shape but internally they're in a bad space and for some um, they are not in shape on the outside and that you can see a reflection of their lifestyle choices and their habits that affect their outward image and then it really mirrors what's happening on the inside and for me it was always about inside I just had this vision of what do my insides look like some of the articles I had read at the time was talking about how long it takes meat to digest in your system and that certain meats can stay in your stomach for up to two weeks and that just made me feel horrible because ultimately you wouldn't leave a piece of steak out in your kitchen on the side for two weeks so why would you leave it in your stomach for two weeks we can all fall into eating habits based on what culture tells us and society tells us and ultimately we have to at some point really look and say well our health is our priority and we have to take charge and control over what we consume it seems as though we live in a time where if people say you need this much protein or this many calories or this much calcium um, we just jump to it and we feel like we're the experts and we start preaching that same message um, but not fully informed about the facts and some of these facts are just simple you know it, it's not too complicated it just all comes back down to we are what we eat I would say the culture part of it came to my attention many years ago when I went to Australia I went to a store and I saw on their shelves crocodile and kangaroo steak and that blew my mind because I know that where I come from in England, beef, pork, chicken, lamb are the main meats that you will see and that's what's normal to a British person. However, just on the other side of the world, they're normal is something different and so I saw instantly how we are culturally programmed to deem one type of food as normal and another not and so I just wanted to explore the range of foods that were available to me and really deepen my knowledge on foods. This one's really funny because when you do tell someone you're going vegan or plant-based they say what are you going to eat and actually when you really break it down there are less meat foods than there are non-meat foods and most people who consume meat only eat two or three meals a week or the same type of meats rotated but non-meat foods are vast in legumes and beans and vegetables and fruits and so many different types of foods that you cannot even see right now because you're focused on the few meals that you eat per week. Another thing that came to my mind is that we give our plants water not cola we give our pets the correct pet food for optimal health. We put the correct fuel in our cars. So why do we not prioritize what we put into our bodies? That's the part that's concerning for me and partly why I had to make this change. Some of the benefits that I've noticed over the past five years are better clarity, more energy, better hair and skin, a noticeable reduction in the number of seizures that I have and just a better control over my weight and I feel that's all based on the lifestyle it creates a pattern of routine in that you're very conscious of what you're eating and nothing is very random and if you do have the random additional thing um, it's really just a smaller percentage of your diet that really ha doesn't have much impact on you at all some of the facts about being plant-based that I've learned is that you can be unhealthy 
it's a false belief that being a vegan or plant-based means that you're automatically healthy. Uh, my journey has not been healthy the whole time I've been plant-based. There's times where all I'm eating is pasta or potatoes or chips and things that say vegan on them like Oreos, but that doesn't make you a healthy person. And so understanding that the title vegan or plant-based doesn't automatically make you healthy. You have to be conscious with the foods that you're eating. And it's more about eating the right types of food as opposed to not eating other foods. The second fact that came to mind is that we are only as strong as our motives. Uh, my motives are very, very clear that I've stated to you. And so they're strong enough to maintain me and they were strong enough to not give me any temptations to want to have meat or any other products that are not deemed plant-based. And so your motivation needs to be strong enough to keep you in this lifestyle. And I would say if you're doing it as, you know, a 30 day type challenge, it'll be quite difficult unless your motive is very strong. Some people do it because they want to lose weight. Some people do it because of the environment and some people do it for their love for animals and whatever it is that you're doing it for, it needs to be a strong motive, strong enough to keep you when you're out in the world and you realize that actually, hey, these restaurants don't really cater to my needs or you're in a social environment and there's no meal that's been prepared for you. The motivation is what makes you think ahead and plan ahead and be prepared for a world that doesn't support your dietary requirements. The third fact that happens, it just it's, it's amazing that happens really, is that it highlights that what we focus on expands. When I was in a world of just eating meat and living a certain type of lifestyle, I didn't see a lot of the things that I now see. I didn't see a lot of the foods that I now see. I didn't know the facts and I didn't know how beneficial herbs were because they weren't needed. I've been opened up to a vast platter of a world of foods that I never would have seen unless I took this journey. And so as my focus changed, my vision changed and my perspective of food changed, uh, but not just the food side to it. While I didn't start this journey because of animal ethics or the environment, I've actually been more invested in learning about the environment and nature, but also animal welfare. And now these have become additional motivations for me in that I can now see that the unethical nature of the food industry doesn't align with my values or the lifestyle that I want to live. And so my motivations for maintaining this lifestyle only get stronger. But that all comes down to what I'm focusing on. If you're thinking of going plant-based, I 100% recommend it. Um, the benefits that I've experienced are amazing. I don't want to continue the chain in my family of illness and diabetes and high blood pressure. And if I can limit the potential of those things, then why not? And so if you're thinking today of doing this plant-based journey, I would say the first thing that you should do is check your motives, check your reason, what's your why? Why are you trying to do this? And really say, is this why so meaningful that you will commit to this journey? The second thing I would say is do your research, um, learn more, discover more, don't go into it blind where you, you, know, you don't know much about the types of food that's available to you. Learn the benefits of herbs. Learn what happens when you combine certain foods together and really treat it as a project. Your, your health is a new project and one that you can really embark on knowing that you're doing the homework, you're doing the research, you're putting together the facts and you are the test. And you'll see over time that you'll start to have your own benefits. They may be different to mine, but as you start to see those benefits and you start to see how your life changes, your body, your mind, your whole experience of being a human, um, you will be motivated more to continue. And so do your research and implement that research into your choices day to day. My final point is plan your meals. This is something that I have to keep reminding myself and I don't do it all the time, but thinking ahead helps. If you plan your groceries, you have less temptations to eat unhealthily, to just pick up a quick snack. Um, you can actually take the time out to say, how long is this meal going to take? I'm going to cook it. And you know from the morning what you're going to eat. You know your whole plan of the day so you can get in the right quantities of food that you need. I hope that you found this useful today. This is just my journey. Um, I'm looking forward to the next five years. Maybe I'll do a 10 year update. Um, but ultimately, just know that your lifestyle choices are solely down to you. You don't have to conform to any certain type of label or lifestyle. 
It's been a great lifestyle change for me and I'm sure that if you search the web you'll see so many examples, so many people who have benefited from living a plant-based lifestyle and you've just got to see where do you fit into that puzzle or do you fit into it at all and really take it from there from the first step. Thank you for listening today. If you like what you hear, feel free to subscribe. And until next time, stay blessed and I wish you better days.